proper abdominal uh, examination. Just to remind you about the same uh, important uh, topics as I mentioned before regarding the uh, preparation, well preparation of the steps of the uh, exam, so that to be uh, concentrated, focused in the, in the exam for the identifying the, uh, the signs and the interpreted the signs with each other to reach for a diagnosis and differential diagnosis, then for the investigations and planning. The, for abdominal cases examination, <clears throat> most common cases come in the, uh, in the clinical exam like the following. First, mostly, this can be divided into renal cases or uh, liver and spleen and lymph node cases. Okay, so we have chronic liver disease, liver cirrhosis, with the stigma of chronic liver disease. This is one topic, and other is the kidney renal failure, either renal failure alone or renal transplantation, or patient has a renal uh, replacement therapy, either the renal dialysis or renal retinal dialysis or renal transplantation. Uh, apart from chronic liver disease, cirrhotic liver with stigmata of chronic liver disease, there is uh, either you have hepatomegaly alone without stigmata of chronic liver disease, or you have a splenomegaly alone, Without the stigmata of chronic liver disease, or you have hepatic splenomegaly without the stigmata of chronic liver disease. One of the commonest of the hepatic splenomegaly without stigmata of chronic liver disease is the chronic hemolytic anemia. Okay, then the renal cases, the uh, either polycystic kidney or renal failure. Uh, peritoneal dialysis, hemodialysis, renal transport. Let's start firstly to identify what we meant by stigmata of chronic liver disease. Stigmata of chronic liver disease means that this patient has a cirrhotic liver, and you can see, you can, uh, see a specific signs indicated that this patient has a cirrhosis, liver cirrhosis, like the following. If you check the hand of the patient, in the hand of the patient, you can see there is clubbing, leukonychia, or colionychia. Then after that, extend the hand observation, you can see if there is astrexis, filabin tremors, and check if there is any palmar erythema, and check the debutrine contraction. Astrexis is, uh, as you mentioned, look, make the patient out, outstretched hands and make slightly those flexion like this, and you check by the uh, lateral view. If the patient has a flabbing tremors like this at the level of the wrist joint, this is called asterixis or flabbing tremors. This flabbing tremors is not uh, specific for hepatic cell failure or hepatic encephalopathy. It can be in uranic encephalopathy or in respiratory failure or in toxins, but it is one of the stigmata of chronic hepatitis. Uh, a change of the nail, leukonychia, like uh, white, uh, white nail, in the case of hypoalbuminemia. Colionychia is like a, a spooning of the, of the nail, especially with the uh, higher indications anemia. Uh, Dubitin contraction, you can see, is like a, a tendon here, making a collection even of the uh, medial one or two fingers of the hand. And if you try to feel the palm of the hand, you can feel the uh, chain contraction. Usually, this is with the alcoholic liver disease. Palmar erythema in the hand, usually you see that there is a redness in the thinner, hypothenar, and the eminence of the base of the fingers and the uh, pulp of the fingers. This is the important area of the palmar erythema. Then after you finish the head, when you check the face, you see jaundice. Then after that, in the chest, the spider nevi. Then the nicomastia. Then the shrunken liver. If you examine the abdomen, shrunken liver, the dilated uh, abdominal vein. If there is a dilated abdominal vein, which indicates this patient has a severe portal hypertension, and also ascites and splenomegaly, which is a, which are a signs of. Uh, Portal hypertension. 
in uh, spider nevi uh, the, it's important to find يعني, more than three to five spider nevi it's usually in the level uh, of the severe cava distribution you can see it in the face in the neck in the front of the chest or even the back so try to search at these areas for the spider nevi spider nevi is like a, a dilatation of the of the capillaries if we have a central like this and if you and this some uh, like uh, radiation of the capillaries like this if you try to press over the central part there will be loss of this distribution and after that when you release the pressure you can see the distribution again which go from the direction of the center to the direction of the outside okay this is the uh, spider nipple Rhinicomastia, it is usually due to a change of the hormonal uh, hormonal balance, and uh, it, you, can, you can feel the uh, enlarged uh, breast, especially in the mid. Shrunken liver and dilated veins, when you ask the patient to cough, or if you check the abdominal wall, you can see a dilated vein and ask the patient to cough, it will be prominently apparent. Lindsay, ascites, and splenomate. These are the stigmata of chronic liver disease. However, you can see some of them. This is considered chronic liver disease, the stigmata of chronic liver disease. If not apparently present, so it, it is no stigmata of chronic liver disease. Okay, let's go to the presentation of abdominal disease. What's required uh, for you to mention in the case of uh, them? You need to present the finding as, as follows. Present firstly what is uh, peripheral observation. If the patient has any uh, abnormality at the peripheral, you need to mention. Starting from the surrounding observation, anything attached to the patient, any uh, jaundice, you see pallor, did you, did you see any scar, any uh, walking aid, for example, anything like this, you need to mention. If you see any abnormality in the finger, clubbing, so in Colionicia, leukonicia, palmariatina, dubitin contraction, flabbing tremors, maybe fistula, any scar. So mention all the surrounding or any, the, any external features of sedation. Then after that, you need to comment about the liver, the spleen, and if there is any ascites or no. And lymph node examination is important in case of you find hepatomegaly or splenomegaly. And for the cases of the kidney, you need to make a comment about uh, if the patient has renal replacement therapy, for example, he has peritoneal dialysis, or this patient has a renal dialysis catheter, or this patient has an AV fistula, or this patient has a renal transplantation and there's a scar and kidney transplant, to give the full comment, as we, we will mention uh, uh, So, if you, if you, from the first spot, you can see which case you will uh, you will see in the, in the, from the start. If it's a case of uh, renal failure, you need to, to mention about the uh, current uh, renal replacement therapy, any previous renal replacement therapy, any uh, cause of renal failure apparently to you, what about the volume of the observation, and what about the adequacy of dialysis with this patient, and what about any complications of renal failure apparently in this region? This is a full comment in any uh, renal failure case. Okay. Sometimes you can see the patient has uh, AV fistula, but this AV fistula is not working. Okay, because this patient, for example, is not real trans has renal transplant. So you can see transplant and the fistula. You can see scars of the central light insertion. You can see a scars of the take of catheter before, like this. So in kidney diseases, you need to comment all in, uh, on all uh, the following items, as I have mentioned to you. The uh, current mode of renal replacement therapy, any previous mode of renal replacement therapy, and the uh, cause of renal failure, if apparently if you have, see, uh, for example, uh, finger pricking or a glucose machine beside the patient, so this indicates that this patient has a glucometer to measure the blood sugar. So mostly it's diabetic. If this patient has an ear aid, mostly you can mention that it's bulimerinic title due to Albert disease. 
so there is a clue like this. And what about the volume steroid of the patient? Is it polyvolumic or hypervolumic? And any complication of the uh, renal failure, like if this patient has a uh, parathyroidectum scar, for example, if this patient has a repeated puncture, scars of uh, Bellingcat insertion, if this patient has uh, any bone fracture due to renal osteodystrophy, etc. Okay. In the cases of uh, liver disease, either we have a chronic liver disease with a stigmat of chronic liver disease, or we have an isolated hepatomegaly, or isolated spleomegaly, or we have hepatic spleomegaly, or we have hepatic spleomegaly with lymphadenomies. Okay. As I mentioned before, in abdominal examination, uh, we usually uh, go inside the room, making uh, after the bill, and checking of the examiner and we go inside and uh, for the patient to read the label and while reading we are doing hand sterilization and after that uh, doing the reading of the patient and start the examination by the general survey and then after that start the uh, local examination from the hand then for arm arm the neck face the eye nose then lower limb, then after that go to the abdomen by examining the abdomen inspection, palpation, percussion, postcultation. Then after that, let the patient sit up and examine the back. Then after that, uh, examine the lower limb, uh, the lymph nodes. Then uh, shake the patient and the breathing and the do hand sterilization again and go to the preventive finding and for the discussion. So, this is the steps. Firstly, we do uh, greeting, general survey, checking the hand, checking the face, the eye, nose. Then we go to the abdomen, the garden inspection, palpation, percussion, and uh, auscultation. Lower limb examination, and after that, examine with this sedation set up and examine the back and examine the uh, lymph node. Before starting examination, as we mentioned before, we need to do hand sterilization, read the instruction well, greet uh, the patient, and introduce yourself. I am Dr. Rabi. I will examine your tummy and I will, I will examine your body. Okay. Do you have any pain or discomfort? Please, if you have any pain or discomfort, let me know. In abdominal examination, let the patient lie in the first uh, maybe the patient in the 45 degree. While you are doing general survey, uh, it's okay. Uh, when you start abdominal examination itself, you need to put the patient in a uh, flat position, zero degree. Okay. When you will go to do a general survey of the patient, it's uh, recommended to make a good exposure for the patient in a very well. Don't be shy or embarrassed for making a, a good exposure. You need to expose the abdomen and the chest very well. Okay, to check any scars, any uh, anything. Okay. In general inspection, we will go to the bed at the end of the bed, at the leg side, put your hand uh, behind your back and have a look for the patient and the surrounding, trying to search for any clue or for any uh, uh, specific something uh, around the patient uh, or inside the patient. He has NGT, he has Caster from his abdomen, his caster in his neck, like this. Okay. While you are doing the general uh, survey of the patient, uh, you can ask the patient to cough, okay, and take breath in and breath out. This coughing give you idea about the movement of the of the abdomen, any rigidity, any tenderness like this, and also his uh, by coughing you can see the Dilated veins and it will be more uh, prominent. Okay. The scars of the abdomen, you need to identify the most common scars like appendectomy scar, the cesarean section uh, scar, uh, the uh, Mercedes Benz scar of the liver transplantation, any exedulatory scar, any cholecystectomy scar, any spinectomy scar, midline laboratory scar, etc. This is as a uh, Mercedes Benz scar, the characteristic scar of the liver uh, transplantation. 
also from your general look or first spot to the patient, you can see a uh, patient like this. You can see that the patient has ascites, he has uh, jaundice like this. You can consider this chronic liver uh, disease. If you complete the picture of stigmata of chronic liver disease, so mostly this patient has, um, you, will, you will put this patient under, under the, the, the category of uh, chronic liver disease with stigmata of chronic liver disease. He has liver cirrhosis, for example, or uh, his patient is alcoholic, uh, hepatitis, autoimmune, uh, uh, etc., that from the causes of uh, stigmata of chronic liver disease. Or if you find the patient has a specific facial features like boromite zygoma, he has uh, pallor and jaundice at the same time. He has telemegaly, hepatomegaly, a scar of cholecystic to report, a scar of splenic to report. So you can think that this patient has a chronic hemolytic. Okay. So the first spot is very important. Uh, Let's start by the hand examination. In hand, as I mentioned, you will see the nail. If there is any clubbing, any leukonychia, it's called white nail uh, bed in hypoalbuminemia of chronic liver disease. Colunychia, like spooling of the finger, is for uh, decayed iron deficiency anemia. Checking the palm for uh, to between contraction for the palmar edicina. Okay. Checking the extension of the hand for the uh, tapping tumors, astrexis. Uh, checking the skin, if you have a bit illegal, you can search about other autoimmune disease in this patient, like autoimmune arthritis, like this. If the patient has look dark in color, so you can think that he has hemochromatosis, mostly uh, secondary hemochromatosis due to repeated blood transfusion, for example. Okay. If you see the patient has aromatoid hand, uh, you can think about filter uh, syndrome and skin imagery. They are triad of filter syndrome. Patient has uh, rheumatoid arthritis, seropositive rheumatoid arthritis, plus uh, leukopenia, plus splenomic. Okay. Checking wasting of the of the muscle, which is characteristic of chronic liver. Uh, this is the examination of the clubbing. Ask the patient to put the fingers uh, like this and check the window. The shamroof window is blocked. This is indicates that patient has a clubbing and the stretch of the hand like this and like this. This is for the phallopathy uh, and this is for the fine uh, chips. Okay. Regarding the clubbing, as I mentioned before, because clubbing is common now in cardiology case, pulmonology case, abdominal case. Okay. So you know, you know before the uh, stages of the clubbing, stage one, two, uh, stage three, stage four, stage four called hypertrophic obstructive, hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthrosis, uh, and there is a, a specific cause of clubbing, especially in the uh, abdominal case. We uh, have spoken about pulmonary causes, cardiology causes, and GIT causes. There is also endocrinology causes, and there is some epidemic causes of the uh, clubbing. Uh, in uh, abdominal cases, there will be chronic liver disease, especially if complicated with hepatic cell carcinoma, and the uh, primary biliary cirrhosis and the inflammatory bowel disease in celiac disease and in the uh, GIT lymphoma and in the lymphoma. This is the main cause of clubbing in GIT cases. Okay. After we finish the hand, we'll go to the uh, upper limb. Try to uh, uh, examine the, uh, the arm way to find any uh, AV fistula. Uh, this is if AV fistula uh, might be not uh, obvious for you. You need to make like a scanning and say, survey over the forearm and the arm observation to, to not miss any uh, AV fistula, arteriovenous fistula. Uh, this patient may have uh, 
bridge of catalytic irrigation over here or break of catalytic irrigation over here. Or you may have uh, what's called graft. Graft here, like this. Uh, search in the other limb, any needle track mark, any bruising indicates the patient has a bleeding disorder, like this. Uh, after you check the, the arm, you can go to after that to the axilla regarding checking the uh, axillary here, any loss of the axillary here, any scar of radius lymph node biopsy. If this patient has hepatic polymegaly with lymph adenopathy, you can see so. Go, uh, search well about the forearm, arm, and in the uh, axilla. At the neck, check for the cancerous negligence, which has many differential diagnoses. Especially hidden malignancy or insulin resistance or obesity, like this. Uh, and the neck also, you can check for the uh, GVD if it's elevated or not, just it give you a clue about the volume of status of this patient. This volume of status is important in case of renal failure or in case that this patient has ascites. So, uh, uh, ascites of chronic liver disease or if this patient has a, a renal failure or uh, renal replacement therapy by any mobility. So you need to confirm that this patient is hypervolemic or if this patient in the EU volemic steps. Uh, in the face also, uh, checking for the parotid, it's important in case of uh, alcohol, might be uh, increased aside or in any in infiltrative diseases like sarcoidosis or amyloidosis. After finish the neck, we'll go to the face, checking for the eye, or uh, ask the patient to look up and look down for seeing any fellow, any jaundice, any polycythemia, in case of polycystic kidney disease, any vancilasma, indicate could it is matching with the patient with primary failure cirrhosis, if a female uh, has itching, uh, jaundice, hepatomegaly, uh, vancilasma. So this will be matching criteria for primary failure research. Then go to the mouse to check if the patient has any cyanosis, uh, any change of the tongue and the lip, any pigmentation, angular stomatitis, candidiasis, oral ulcer, etc. Yeah, many, many, many causes. Uh, check the nose if there is any lupus pernia for sarcoidosis. Because you know sarcoidosis will, will give you a picture of because it's one of the infiltrative diseases. It will give you a picture of the vegetable and the lymphatics. Okay. Uh, then, uh, after finish the face, after finish the face, we'll go to the lower limb, checking if there is any lower limb edema, and do uh, the test for uh, edema to know if there is edema or no, and what is the level while you are pressing the Mid, at the level of the middle malus of the patient, uh, be gentle, look to the patient's eye, and try to maintain the patient with care. Okay. Checking the cult with no DVT, if there is any erythema nodosum as a sign of uh, sarcoidosis. Uh, then, after that, we will go to the uh, abdomen uh, itself. Okay. For the inspection, palpation, percussion, and the uh, oscopy. Uh, at this stage, you need to uh, make the patient at the flat, uh, flat position. Okay. Even if the patient is at 45 degree, take a permission from the patient and from the examiner that you would like to put the patient in a uh, flat position. Firstly, inspect all the abdomen, okay, for any uh, scar, any stria, any uh, stoma, any tube uh, outside, any specific module like sister many Joseph module around the apparatus which indicates the Any distension of the abdomen indicates that this patient has an ascites. Uh, any uh, scratch mark. Of itching like this. Okay, this is for the uh, inspection. Okay. Then after that, you will do uh, palpation of the abdomen. This palpation, you will do it superficial palpation, then deep palpation. Okay. Uh, in superficial palpation, the aim of superficial palpation to detect any superficial mass or any specific area of 
tenderness or uh, rigidity. Do uh, the following uh, four items. Firstly, make the bed is flat. Then you need to go at the level of the patient, level of the bed of the patient. Then number three, making a superficial palpation through the all the nine quadrant of the abdomen, starting as you like. If you would like to start like uh, this, inverted is shaped, okay. If you would like to start by any manner, but the, it's important to uh, go through all the quadrant by your hand in a superficial palpation. Superficial palpation, you make your hand move at the level of the metacarbophalangeal joint like this and try to elicit any superficial mass and uh, predict any rigidity or tenderness. Okay, so number one, let the patient uh, at zero degree. Number two, you will go down at the same level of the bed of the patient. Number three, you will make superficial palpation all over the uh, nine quadrant. And uh, while you are doing this, number four, you are watching the face of the patient and look to the eyes of the patient. Okay. After you finish the uh, superficial palpation, you will go to the deep palpation. Deep palpation is needed to detect the following. What about the liver? What about spleen? What about the kidneys? Okay. Uh, by for, for, for doing this, you finally you will have an idea about what is the size of the liver and spleen and uh, the kidneys. After deep barbation, you will confirm that by the by the percussion. Okay, so uh, for example, you will do uh, checking the uh, right loop of the liver firstly. Okay, by doing deep barbation, starting from the uh, right iliac uh, region and go up, up. Okay, trying to catch any uh, right border of the liver and Try to coincide this movement with the patient taking a uh, breath in. Because patient doing breath in, he will inflate the chest so the diaphragm will be flat. So you can, the liver will come to your side so it can be uh, easy, available for you. Okay. After doing the uh, checking the right lobe of the liver, okay, also can examine the left lobe of the liver and Go to the, sit, the chest to make a percussion to reach to the upper border of the liver. Okay. Uh, and after that, uh, you can also uh, make a palpation of the uh, spleen. Start also from the right iliac region and go. To the direction of the left hypochondrial region. Okay, it's according to the size of this spleen. Might might be this patient has a mild splenomegaly or moderate or severe or crossing the midline. Okay, so uh, you are trying to go in the direction to catch the spleen, going in this way till reach to the left chondral region. If you cannot find, you can go also here to check if the spleen is going in this direction. If you cannot find, you can ask the patient to go to the right side and make by manual uh, palpation. Okay. Uh, if you cannot find, also you can go after that the, in the percussion. You can check the uh, percussion of the uh, tropes area. If tropes area is dull, it gives you a clue that this patient has a mild spinal. After checking the liver, checking the spleen, then go to the kidney. Kidney is by uh, bilateral, uh, by manual uh, feeling, okay, to check the kidney from the right side, like this, putting your hand, right hand at the right lumbar region and your left hand at the back of the patient at the renal angle and try to palpate the kidney. And also at the left side, you also don't put your left side, your left hand below the patient and your right hand at the left lumbar Vision trying to palpate the uh, left kidney. Okay. After that, you will do the uh, percussion. Percussion is to confirm the spleen and the liver and to detect the uh, ascites. 
in a percussion, you are also make a percussion of the right, of the upper uh, border of the liver through the chest, okay, and till the uh, note of percussion resonant, 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 then become dull. And to confirm that by asking the patient to take deep breaths and hold and percuss again, it will be dull. Okay. Uh, so when you are have a zone like this, like this patient, you are making a percussion here, percussion here, percussion here, and here at the, uh, for example, this is a right uh, intercostal space, the right hips intercostal space, which is exhibited the uh, upper border of the liver. And then ask the patient now at this part above it you, you feel you feel resonant and below it you feel dull. At the first dull, at the first dullness here, you ask the patient to take deep breath. So the lung will go down and it will replace this upper border of the liver because the liver will be tossed down. So this dullness note will be shifted to a resonant note. This indicates that you are here at the upper border of the liver. Uh, also, from the down, you are making a percussion from right to the costa. But uh, as you know, the percussion of the liver from the abdomen is light percussion, while the percussion from above is heavy percussion. Okay? And also, you do percussion, light percussion here, till you have a dullness. Then, after that, you uh, estimate what is the liver stain. Liver stain is the distance between the upper border of the liver till the lower border of the liver. The same also you will do for the left loop of the liver. If it is enlarged, you will do a light percussion, light percussion, light percussion here in the umbilical area till the irrigated area. Till the tone of the percussion shifted from resonant of the abdomen to the dullness of the hepatic picture. Okay. Then you will do percussion of the liver, uh, sorry, percussion of the spleen with the same direction also, starting from the right iliac region to the left hypochondrial area. Trying to catch the spleen while you are doing a percussion. Also, percuss from this area down to above. Also, percuss the troops area. The troops area usually at this area. Between the uh, left fifth intercostal space and the uh, left eighth intercostal space and this line of the uh, mid axillary. Because after this mid axillary line, the spleen is here. If this is normal spleen, it usually will be here. It will be behind the mid splenic, uh, the mid axillary line. And spleen will be located at the uh, below, behind, I mean behind the uh, mid axillary line. So when you percuss this area, it will be uh, resonant. But in the early splenomegaly, this troughs area will be done. Okay, so dullness of the troughs area, it will give you a clue that this patient might have an early spleen. Uh, after we finish the uh, percussion, we'll go to the last step, which is auscultation. Usually, do uh, the auscultation at a specific area. Specific area of the auscultation. With the colon, usually you check the auscultation at the, uh, the gastric area. This is called the hepatic venous hum. Okay. And you if, uh, checking the uh, renal artery and stenosis area, which is two to three centimeters above and lateral to the umbilicus. This is the area for the renal artery stenosis. And you uh, check for the auscultation of the spinal sound, like here and here. So this is the main area of auscultation for the uh, hepatic venous uh, hum and the renal artery stenosis area and the uh, intestinal sum. If you have a hepatomegaly, you will examine here for uh, the hepatic berwee. If you have a splenomegaly, you will examine above the spleen for the splenic berwee. After that, you will ask the patient to sit up and to go to the back of the patient to check in the sacral area if there is any sacral edema or not, and also checking the lung base by auscultation to uh, check if this patient has uh, is a crepitation at the base of the lung or not. Uh, and also at this position, at this position, you can start uh, examining the uh, okay. 
in lymph node examination, uh, you are usually checking the uh, survival lymph node and auxiliary lymph node. Uh, definitely, I mean, lymph node examination, you will do this in case of you have a lymph So you need to check the, the lymph node. But in case of you have a renal case, so no need to examine the uh, lymph node. Okay. Lymph node examination, you will examine the lymph node for the survival and for the uh, exit. Okay. Please do uh, In uh, epigastric region, what do we uh, auscultate for? Sorry, epigastric what? Uh, the, you said that uh, we have to check for the renal brew, the hepatic hump, and uh, uh, one mark you made in the epigastric region. Yeah, you, you are examining in the hepatic uh, epigastric area, which is called hepatic venous hum. Okay, this is to rule out that any doctor hypertension or uh, hepatic cell carcinoma. This is hepatic venous hum. If you have hepatomegaly, you will examine above the uh, above above the liver okay? for checking also any hepatic cell carcinoma, or any bruise, any uh, vascular malformation. Okay, if you have splenomegaly, you will put the stethoscope on the uh, spleen size to examine for splenic berwee. So hepatic berwee, if you have splenomegaly, splenic berwee, if you have uh, hepatic berwee, if you have hepatomegaly, splenic berwee, if you have splenomegaly, uh, venous uh, epigastric pulsation or epigastric uh, venous hump is mandatory to uh, to be done. Plus at the renal artery area and the intestinal cell. That is for portal hypertension that in uh, epigastric region. Sorry, that's for what? In the epigastric region, that is for portal hypertension. For portal hypertension. Portal hypertension or HCC. Okay, thank you. Portal hypertension or HCC. Hepatic cell carcinoma. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, for uh, lymph node, lymph node examination, you will examine the cervical, uh, cervical lymph node and the axillary lymph node. Uh, cervical lymph node will examine the submental, submandibular, preauricular, and posterior auricular. Okay, and on the sternomastoid, okay, we see the posterior group of the sternomastoid and the anterior group along the anterior border of the sternomastoid. And don't forget the uh, supraclavicular uh, lymph nodes. Okay, the left one, this left supraclavicular lymph node, is called the cow's lymph node. It indicates that you have an intestinal malignancy. So the cow's lymph node means that. Enlargement of the left supraclavicular lymph node. After you finish the uh, cervical uh, lymph node, you will go to the axillary lymph node by trying to uh, examine the axillary area regarding the medial group, lateral group, anterior group, posterior group, and apical group. The all the like a wall. Consider the axilla is a wall, a lateral, lateral, uh, lateral wall at the arm. Medial wall at the axilla and anterior wall at the anterior axillary fold, posterior wall at the posterior axillary fold, and the apical at the apical by hooking. After that, you will finish now the uh, full examination, cover the patient, hand shaking, and do sterilization, and go to 